Domestic violence is a problem that will not go away. On average, nearly 20 people per minute are physically abused by an intimate partner in the United States. During one year, this equates to more than 10 million women and men. One in four women and one in nine men experience severe intimate physical violence caused by their partners. As we have seen in many similar cases, relationships in which violence is frequent and severe, rarely get better, the violence usually escalates. These relationships too often have a very tragic ending. Such is the case that we will cover in this episode of Planet Insomnia Mystery Channel. This case of domestic abuse was so extreme, that it set a groundbreaking criminal law precedence. It also was the inspiration for a movie starring Farrah Fawcett. On March 9, 1977, in Danville, Michigan, Francine Moran Hughes, set fire to the bed in which her ex-husband, Mickey Hughes was sleeping. Mickey was killed and the house destroyed in the resulting fire. Francine was tried for murder, but the outcome of the trial was very unusual as we will see. Who was Francine Hughes? Francine Hughes was born in Stockbridge, Michigan on August 17, 1947. Her father, a farm worker, was an abusive alcoholic. As a child, she saw firsthand, what an abusive husband was like. Little did she know that she would be trapped in a relationship more abusive than anything she had ever witnessed. Domestic violence was too often a part of life in many households in the 50s, 60s and 70s. However, unlike today, little was done about it and few people were able to escape or seek help from violent relationships. At age 16, Francine left high school to marry James Hughes, known as Mickey. It did not take long for Mickey to show his dark side and very early in their marriage, Mickey became physically abusive towards Francine. The couple had four children and Francine was a very loving mother, who had dreams of becoming a nurse. Mickey was very possessive and controlling and would not let her leave the house to study. Years of abuse The physical, mental and verbal abuse was so severe, that Francine separated from Mickey several times. Mickey would urge her to return and that he would change. She would return and his good behavior was temporary. Her children often witnessed the violence. Eventually, it was too much for her to endure and she filed for divorce. Although she had moved out after their divorce was finalized in April 1971, Mickey had moved back in with her after he was involved in a serious car accident. Francine later testified in court that although she was reluctant to have him return to the home, she felt she could not refuse as she did not want to hurt him more than he already had been, referring to the severity of his injuries from the accident. The abuse persisted and escalated in the years after Mickey's recovery, and he regularly beat her and destroyed furniture. Francine felt that she could not remove Mickey from the home or move out herself, fearing that he would make good on his constant threats to kill her. Francine once said in an interview with People magazine, I learned that if I fought back, it only made him more angry. I thought, well, maybe I could kill myself. But then I thought, if I kill myself, who is going to take care of the kids? Nobody could love them like me. I would conjure up schemes about how I would sneak off to the airport with the kids and leave. But I would picture us sitting on a park bench with nowhere to go. Then I would get scared thinking about what he would do if he found me. The Crime On the afternoon of the fire, March 9, 1977, Francine returned from a secretarial course she was taking, and found Mickey in a drunken rage. He refused to allow her to make food for their four children, and berated her about quitting school, which she refused to agree to, even after Mickey forced her to burn her school books. He began to physically assault her. She called the police the first chance she got. The police came and spoke to the pair, but left after refusing to arrest Mickey as they had not witnessed the physical abuse. However, a police officer would later testify that Hughes had warned her that it was all over for her because she had called the police. Let's remember that this was the unfortunate reality during those times. Police did not take domestic abuse seriously. Later that evening, Francine again attempted to make dinner for herself and the children, but Mickey threw the food onto the floor. He forced Francine to the floor by bending her arm behind her back and made her clean the mess with her hands. When she was finished, he dumped out the trash can on the floor and forced her to clean it again. Finally, he forced her to agree to quit secretarial school. He then forced her to cook dinner for him and raped her afterwards. She suffered through this last assault until he finally fell into a drunken slumber. She decided to wait for her youngest child, Dana, to return home. When he did not return after some time, Francine decided to burn the house down to prevent her from returning to her life with Mickey again. She told the three children to put on their coats and wait in the car. 
She then poured gasoline around Mickey's bed and lit the gasoline. The resulting fire consumed the home. Francine then drove away and later arrived at the police station. With the children waiting in the car, Francine turned herself in and confessed to the crime. The Trial Francine was put on trial for murder in Lansing, Michigan. At the trial, Hughes was found not guilty by reason of temporary insanity in one of the first cases involving battered woman syndrome as a defense. Francine's lawyer was able to convince the jury that 13 years of abuse had left her in a state of guilt, fear and denial. These symptoms are similar to what we now call post-traumatic stress disorder. The lawyer argued that Francine snapped and in a moment of temporary insanity, killed her husband. Both the prosecution and the defense agreed that Francine's plight was sympathetic. The jury heard Francine's powerful testimony about the horrible abuse she suffered at the hands of Mickey Hughes. It worked and Francine was acquitted. However, no jurors have ever confirmed publicly whether that was a factor in their decision. The book and the movie. The Burning Bed is both a 1980 nonfiction book written by Faith McNulty about battered housewife Francine Hughes, and a 1984 TV movie adaptation written by Rose Lyman Goldenberg. The movie stars Farrah Fawcett, in what is considered her best acting performance. The plot follows Hughes' trial for the murder of her husband, James Berlin Mickey Hughes, following her setting fire to the bed he was sleeping in at their Dansville, Michigan home on March 9, 1977, and 13 years of physical domestic abuse at his hands. Conclusion A jury understood that years of physical and emotional torture will make a long-suffering victim snap. Their decision that Francine Hughes had burned her abusive ex-husband while in a state of temporary insanity, set an example, a legal precedent and this became a landmark case. However, very few women are acquitted in similar cases, nonetheless, the national conversation regarding domestic abuse has changed forever. Thank you for watching another episode of Planet Insomnia, we appreciate your continued support. Give us a like, leave a comment and subscribe if you haven't done so. And until next time, try and get some sleep, if you can.